The House is uh, is still in session. We have several speakers in the House, and we've uh, sent a runner over to see if we can pull them off the floor. We may not be able to do that. Uh, to echo what Dallas has just said, all the groups here are facing an involuntary annexation. And you are all to be commended for this support because you may be past history depending upon what happens in this law. So I commend you for your support because for 50 years, guess what's happened? Annexation has taken place. It's been a beehive effect where people get organized, they fight it, they go to court, and they lose. Or maybe they win. But then everything settles down and nothing changes. And the only reason that we're here is because the only way to make change is right over there. And that's what we've got to do. And that's where our efforts have been and you folks have been fantastic in doing that. And we've got to keep the effort on. My heroes are from Winston-Salem. Where are the POWs? There they are. John. Come over here. These guys, these, these guys were annexed, what, four years ago? Four years ago. 2003. 2003. They've been in every House committee meeting, except for the one in Asheville. They were here last year. They're here this year. They're, they've been bypassed. They're annexed. They're now citizens of Winston-Salem. No, we're prisoners of Winston-Salem. Okay. Prisoners. prisoners of Winston-Salem. And yet here they are because they believe the issue is so great. I think they deserve a great round of applause. So many people forget how fundamental this issue is. It's not very difficult. You have two groups of people. You have the citizens and you have the government. Both of them have a vested interest in this. Yet only one party gets to make the decision and the other party, the people, get to hang out in the wind. And a lot of you have not been annexed yet, but I want to remind you of what's gonna to happen to you post-annexation. In our area, they decided that they were going to reorganize the wards, and they did. Now both Jack and I here are in, were in section I, who's the largest and most vocally opposed to the annexation. That section was subdivided straight down the middle into two wards. And it was done for one reason and one reason only, and that was to dilute our vote. And that's what they will do to you post-annexation. You need to fight, you need to fight hard. Thank you. Can I say this one quick thing? Yeah. Oh, hold your on. I do want to mention one thing to you. A couple things, really. After we have gone through this, because it started uh, June 23rd, 2003, when they forcibly annexed us into the city. And by the way, I've gotten one street light out of it so far, and that's it. But what you need to understand is do not let them fragment you, okay? They love to have a whole bunch of separate fights going on because you can't hardly, the only ones that win there are the attorneys. You ever notice how much you pay? I can almost tell you exactly what the attorney's going to charge you. And then when you lose it, you oh, we'll appeal. Well, we've sent a lot of attorneys' kids to school. I don't mind telling them I'm not against attorneys, but come on, let's get real. We know who we got to fight. The League of Municipalities. They're the ones that keep this thing going. They're doing it. And I think each and every one of you, I hope, will contact your representative. Because they did a little comedy skit just a minute ago about which office the League wanted. It isn't just the second floor. They want that old building. And I'm not so sure they don't have it. So come on, let's all get out there and make sure we fight against this league. Talk to your representatives, find out which one of them support it and which ones don't. Those that don't aren't very many, but there are some and you need to know who they are. Thank you very much and let's keep it up. I almost forgot about this, but I wanted to, I brought a couple emails and I just want to tell you that, you know, I get emails from people and, I'm, and I try to answer them right away. And I had a real hard time answering these until like a day or so later because it's just like it takes my breath away and it, this is this is the reason why this is very important and all of you writing you're not just doing it for your own area for your own property you're doing it for people across this whole entire state 
and that's why it's important. And you're doing it for people like this who write to me and say, I bought a house out in the country because the tax rate is higher than my prior county and being a single mom, no child support, I can't afford additional taxes. There isn't anything that would benefit us from being incorporated into Clayton as my neighborhood has functional wells and access to garbage. Any idea of how to put a stop to this? And I just don't know what to say other than get involved and come here to the state legislature and keep pounding on them and say this is not right. It's not American. And then I get another one. It says, I'm a retired teacher who had to retire due to multiple health issues. I'm to be annexed in June. The same year my only child will finish high school and the moratorium will end in June of 09. I cannot afford my current medication and my wife may lose her job with the state in 09. I cannot afford to move and I will lose everything I own if I'm forced to pay double taxes. My question is, if annexed, can I lose my home due to unpaid city taxes if I'm taxed beyond my ability to pay? Do I have any rights to protect myself? Those both came one night back to back. And it's like, what can I say to these people? We just have to pound these legislators and, uh, and get, make them understand. You know, when I first was introduced to the annexation issue and my neighborhood had a meeting and hundreds of people showed up for it. There was an elderly, you know, a lot of retired people in my neighborhood and there was an elderly gentleman who stood up and he said, my wife has Alzheimer's. I'm taking care of her. I'm on a fixed income. I can't afford this. And he started to cry. He was going to lose his home. And that's, this is why we fight. This is why we have to keep at this. This is why we have to convince the legislator to give us a fair amount of time to explain this law and explain what it's doing more than the three bites, three minute sound bites we've been given so far. We need time, we need to give them an explanation, we need to show them the nuts and bolts of why this law is wrong and make them hear these stories and understand how the cities are abusing this law and they don't care about these people.